<clears throat> yes. Okay, good morning everyone, also from my side. I hope you are enjoying this event and uh, you are using this opportunity to meet and to discuss uh, great, project, great project ideas which will be uh, hopefully implemented within um, uh, our uh, program. Um, so, sorry. Uh, following, uh -huh, it's here, okay, I think I can. Following previous uh, presentation, um, as well as um, yesterday's, um, uh, like, so to say, emphasis, emphasis on uh, results and focus and uh, impact, uh, my task today is to shortly uh, describe you and emphasize the importance of a continuous uh, monitoring and evaluation of the um, whole process, uh, which should hopefully lead us to um, achievement of all established program goals. Um, as you will see in the slides that follow, a uh, main tool for this um, assessment uh, is uh, called Program Performance uh, Framework. Um, so I will uh, give you a little bit of the context of this uh, tool, what is the ba background, what is the reason that we use it, um, what we actually do with it, or uh, what is the purpose of a uh, performance framework. A uh, little bit explain the concept of monitoring and evalu evaluation, and uh, finally um, say how, how you fit into, uh, into this picture, how the project partners uh, can contribute to the whole process. Okay, as you uh, heard uh, a lot during yesterday and you will uh, hear it a lot uh, during today, um, focus of uh, financing a period 2014 and 2020 is on the uh, tangible results. Um, so, um, both during the, during the program implementation and at the end of program implementation, uh, we have to show what the program is achieving or uh, what the program has achieved. Uh, we have to uh, show it to the commission. Uh, you, you heard yesterday that uh, it's a regulatory requirement and uh, it's a must to follow the implementation and to achieve results. But we also have to um, show it to the to all of us, to the to citizens, we are accountable to citizens who expect to know what has been done with uh, public funds, with uh, EU funds. Um, but however, uh, however, I have to have to say that uh, despite this result-oriented approach, uh, I think that absorption will always be a significant um, indicator of success, especially during uh, election periods. I think. Uh, so just for uh, example, um, to show maybe what is not, uh, what, what, what has changed uh, in comparison uh, with previous period, uh, I have came upon indicators which were really, really general, defined in a general way. For example, uh, indicator was um, an increase of employment in the area up to 5% or increase of um, share of tourism in GDP for 10%. Uh, so you can see it is, uh, it is a good indicator, but it's really hard to achieve that on the level of one project. So uh, in this period, more emphasis is given to, um, to more realistic uh, um, uh, indicators and to enable uh, the, the program to finally achieve its goal it's important to establish uh, clear and realistic activities with uh, realistic and clear results, and uh, that is why we use uh, uh, intervention logic that, that was described uh, in the um, uh, previous presentation. Uh, and to follow, to monitor uh, this intervention logic, the implementation of inter intervention logic, we use uh, a tool which is called Program Perform Performance Framework. Um, as I said, it is a regular regulatory requirement, so uh, necessity to develop performance framework is described in details in EU regulations and guidance documents. 
Um, and what is important to emphasize is that regulations indicate if the program does not perform as planned, the payments can be suspended, uh, or in the end, uh, the financial corrections uh, may uh, apply. Uh, so if we don't want uh, to lose the money, or uh, especially if we already spent our uh, funds on the projects, uh, and we don't want to return it, we should then uh, follow, follow, the, follow uh, what regulation, uh, regulations tell, tell us. Um, now, what uh, the program performance framework does. So, as I said, it controls if the program is following its intervention logic and achieving results as uh, plan planned. Uh, it is uh, composed uh, so to say, at program level, but uh, projects contribute to uh, implementation of performance framework. Um, it is um, composed of certain indicators on the level of priority uh, axis, uh, and it has defined uh, milestones, defined goals for the, uh, for the year 2018 and the final targets for 2023. Uh, just to show an example, uh, for ex uh, one indicator is a financial one, um, which shows financial amount of ERDF, uh, which is going to be, which should be, we expect to be used by 2018 or, uh, or 2023. Uh, then there are some uh, chosen output indicators which uh, refer to a particular priority axis. Uh, like a number of uh, research institutions which will participate in the research pro uh, projects or uh, climate change monitoring systems uh, put, in, in put in place. So those are the, the kind of indicators which are in the performance uh, framework. Um, and how do, how do we define uh, those uh, milestones and targets that we want to, we want to achieve? Um, I would uh, compare it to actually any normal, regular uh, business activity or everything we plan in life, we should have, we should have uh, a goal. And uh, I would say that uh, it can be compared with this uh, smart method. So we, if we want to uh, achieve some, something, we have to define uh, uh, how we want to achieve it, uh, with what resources, and uh, the most important is what we want to achieve in the end uh, in order to be successful. So the milestones and targets have to be uh, uh, specific, uh, measurable, realistic, relevant, achievable, transparent, and of course without uh, giving us additional administrative, administrative burden in, uh, in their uh, implementation. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the definitions are in line with regulations, so this is what is required to uh, from the milestones. Um, so, uh, as I said, uh, the uh, performance framework is defined on the program level, and uh, when defining it in our program, it was um, the lack of previous experience, as we had no predecessor, as you heard yesterday. We are uh, new. We are a new program. Uh, it was a little bit difficult to um, realistically elaborate uh, or, or, or to elaborate a, re a realistic uh, forecast because we had no uh, projects which were already implemented that we can base our estimations uh, on. Um, so as the program, program's performance pr framework depends on the uh, projects, uh, different, um, different financial allocations of uh, uh, of projects that we expect that will be implemented. Um, okay, different financial allocation, different time for implementation, uh, different specificities according to priority axis. That all has had to be considered when uh, defining a performance uh, framework. Uh, but hopefully we managed to uh, uh, do it uh, well and we will, uh, we will with your help achieve uh, all those goals that we um, put uh, in our performance uh, framework. Um, okay, now, um, to make sure that we are going uh, in the right direction, um, we have um, 
let's say, two activities uh, which uh, give us information if we are uh, doing well. Um, these are monitoring and evaluation. Uh, monitoring uh, is um, monitoring of output, outputs and result indicators is uh, more or less continuous uh, activity, uh, which, which gives us information if the plant uh, products were delivered, uh, plant services were provided, um, and if result uh, indicators are changing in the uh, desired way. Uh, so it's continuous, uh, continuous activity. Evaluation is a more uh, systematic approach, uh, which besides also being a regulatory requirement, um, is primarily a valuable tool for uh, programs uh, to see um, how are they doing, let's say, uh, to, to get an assessment of their management uh, practices and what's the most important of the progress of the program uh, towards achieving uh, its objectives. Uh, and as such, evaluation enables uh, continuous learning and improvement uh, for the program and uh, represents a basis uh, for informed decisions. So we can, uh, if we uh, continuously monitor the activities, we uh, uh, do evaluation, we can um, adjust, in, adjust in time if necessary. So if we are not doing as planned, we can, before the end of the program, we can adjust our activities, we can see, we can uh, maybe, um, uh, how to say it, reallocate, so you can focus the money, the funds in some, uh, some maybe other priority which is not doing so well. So, so uh, it, it's useful, it's necessary for us to, to have, um, in, uh, to get, have informed decisions. Um, Monitoring uh, and evaluation are done at the program level. Continuous mo monitoring uh, will be done through online uh, monitoring and information system. Uh, it's basically, what is, basic, uh, what is monitoring basically? Uh, uh, compilation of uh, financial progress uh, data, uh, monitoring uh, change in the level of result indicate indicators, um, uh, information of outputs, a preparation of annual implementation report, which gives, uh, which provides an overview of the activities in the in the past year, uh, and also on the program level, it is possible to arrange to commission program level and uh, thematic uh, evaluations. Uh, but it is done at program level, but the data which on which is based on is from the projects, is from the implementation of projects. Uh, so uh, projects can, uh, US project partners can contribute in a way that you also do it on, your, on the level of uh, your project, uh, that you uh, set up effective monitoring and evaluation uh, systems uh, in order to help uh, program bodies uh, in their, uh, in their uh, job. So um, you will, of course, uh, um, record, register your data, you will, uh, you will, evident, you will uh, uh, have transparent uh, records of your activities, and you will be asked to provide regular um, data for the program uh, bodies. Um, <clears throat> so you should, it would be uh, helpful that you uh, also plan the evaluation of your projects. Uh, it should be planned uh, at the beginning uh, and be in place during the lifetime of, uh, of the project. Uh, of course, it should be uh, flexible, it should uh, be specific and relevant to meet the needs of the, of the uh, uh, partnership and uh, the needs of the specific objectives that projects uh, refer to. Um, the ways, the methods which can be used in uh, this, uh, this evaluation are uh, uh, service, case studies, uh, cost-benefit, cost-effectiveness analysis, expert panels, a focus uh, uh, group, uh, group, and you can do uh, uh, evaluation of impact of the uh, projects. Uh, project level evaluation can be done internally. Uh, by your, your team, by the project team, or it can be uh, done with support of external uh, evaluators. 
uh, with, of course, respecting the principle of objectivity, independence, uh, all, the part all the relevant participants, partners, stakeholders should be included in evaluation process. Uh, assignments uh, have to be clearly defined and based on uh, reliable uh, data and uh, evidence. Uh, and for the end, uh, just practices from 2007-2013 period, uh, evaluations which were, uh, which were, let's say, two types which were performed, like internal, uh, internal evaluation, uh, which was based uh, on, uh, as I said, on internal um, staff of the project and uh, relevant stakeholders, or uh, impact evaluation, which is uh, clearly focused of so on some uh, subject and uh, um, performed by external uh, eval evaluators. So, uh, to conclude, um, okay, you will he hear today uh, how can you, what, what, uh, what, what uh, do you ha have to have in mind to develop a good project? and how important uh, are our are, are results and uh, focus to uh, specific objectives of the program. Um, I wish you all uh, good luck and, uh, and uh, lots of good quality uh, projects. Thank you very much. Thank you.